Hello and welcome to the Proyaku Report, Volume 1, Episode 25, Starters vs. Relievers, Part 2. Again, there was a great follow-up comment on last week's report by Azasan. He, or she, was wondering how Blanco and Luna have fared against starters as opposed to relievers. That in turn leads us to an excellent follow-up to the Starters vs. Relievers Part 1 of Episode number 22. But this time from a batter's perspective. So, let's explore. First of all, I grabbed a list of the top batters between the two leagues as of the end of play on June 14, 2013. The definition of top batter is simply one of the leaders in batting average, OPS, and or home runs. Blanco shows up in all three lists, Luna two of them. In all, I've extracted 33 batters between the two leagues this way for evaluation. Let's first sort this by batting average against starters and compare it with the leading hitters tables. Chunichi's Hector Luna is on top, as expected, hitting slightly better against starters than relievers. Docton's Casey McGee is a surprise second, batting 114 points higher against starters than relievers. Hanshin's Matt Merton ranks third overall against starters, hitting very close to what he does against relievers. I'm impressed by how Luna and Merton are both very consistent. Cebu's Esteban Hermon is fourth, hitting quite a bit better against starters than relievers. While he's ranked third in the Pacific League batting race, he's really seventh overall, combining the leagues. The Giants' Jose Lopez finishes out the top five batting averages against starters, holding the same rank, number five, as he holds in the Central League. Like McGee, he's hitting just over 100 points worst against relievers. While Yokohama's Norihiro Nakamura ranks above Jose in the Central League batting title race, he doesn't show up until 10th in this list. The first Japanese player to rank against starters is Rakuten's Motohiro Shima, hitting 336 against starters to rank in at 6th place. But where is Tony Blanco on this list? Why, he's down below Nori, ranked in 11th place, only, if you can say only, hitting 324 against starters, almost 20 points below his season average of 343. Well, since dividing average up between starters and relievers shifted the rankings by so much, how are all batters doing against relievers? Right away, there's a major breakthrough. SoftBank's Yuya Hasegawa leads everyone, hitting 395 against relief pitching. The leading hitter in the Pacific League with a 342 batting average, Hasegawa seems to take advantage of relievers a good deal more than starters. Even hitting five home runs against relievers, four more than against starters to whom he'd had almost twice as many at-bats. Tony Blanco then comes in second, hitting 387 against relief pitchers, more than 40 points above that against starters. That could cause a bit of a dilemma for opposing managers. Would a tiring starter have a better chance than a fresh reliever? I'm not sure which way to go on this one. Luna drops down to number three despite very close numbers between both starters and relievers. Next comes Oryx's second-year Korean import, Lee Dae-ho. Lee ranks fourth both here and in the Pacific League batting title race. His 307 batting average against starters ranked him 20th on the previous list. So, like Blanco, Lee is hitting the relief core much, much better. Finally, Merton rounds out the top five again, hitting pretty close against both starters and relievers. 
Whereas we had four Japanese players in the top ten against starters, all landing in the lower half, we have six in the top ten against relievers, numbers one and all of the lower half, six through ten. All right, now let's turn our attention to on-base plus slugging, OPS. Tony Blanco stands head and shoulders above everyone else in getting on and hitting for power against starters. Leading both leagues with 23 home runs, he's just pounding the ball against both starters and relievers, more so against relievers, by 150 points. There may be 10 other players who come through more often with a hit against starters than Tony, but none combine getting on and total bases to what Tony Blanco produces. McGee is a surprise second again against starters. Looking at his record, nine doubles, no triples, just 13 home runs, I'm left wondering what's up with him. What it seems to come down to is that pretty much all of his offense has come against starters, very little against relievers. This guy is like Jekyll and Hyde between the two, a completely different batter. Now, I haven't seen him enough to explain this transformation. If there are any Doctin fans in the audience with some insight to this, please chime in. Yakult's Vladimir Ballantin finally shows up on a list, ranking in third place in OPS. With his recent home run tear, hitting home runs in four consecutive at-bats over three games, yes, he's walked a few, he now trails Blanco by just three home runs. And like Blanco, he's reaching base and hitting with more power against relievers than starters. But that's not quite at the same level against either. Luna doesn't hit nearly as many home runs as Blanco and Ballantine, but gets on base consistently. That's why he's the final man in the OPS over one against starters, ranking in fourth place. His OPS drops just .002 against relievers, showing again just how incredibly consistent Luna is. Nippon Ham slugger Sho Nakata finishes out the top five as the first Japanese representative. But looking at the home run totals between starters and relievers doesn't seem to work very well. Most players have less than half of their plate appearances against relievers compared to starters. As a matter of fact, Plate appearances against starters is consistently about five-ninths compared to four-ninths against relievers, reinforcing the idea that starters generally throw five innings and relievers four out of a nine-inning game. Anyway, I'd really like to look at the summations with something a little more even. How about hits, home runs, etc. per 100 plate appearances. So that's what I did. I created a factor for each segment, starters and relievers, to project each field to 100 plate appearances. I left averages and OPS alone as they're already scaled to a percentage of at-bats. Now let's sort this by home runs versus starters. Valentin, who missed a good chunk of the beginning of the season, is outpacing Blanco in home runs when plate appearances against starters is brought even. Michael Abreu cracks the top five, as does Brian Lahare, who I didn't even remember seeing anywhere close before. How about against relievers? The Giants' Shinosuke Abe rises to third place, hitting 7.1 home runs per 100 plate appearances against relievers. So, when he manages to stay in games to the end, he's hitting relief pretty well. Nipponham's Yo Dai Kung 
also rises up to number six, appearing to have more home run power than Lotte's Tadahito Iguchi, who clearly leads everybody above him except the top two in on base plus slugging. Now, once again, I can go on all day long with these numbers, but instead, I'm going to turn these numbers over to you via Google Docs. And, uh, you know, the link is listed below in the various places that I have shared this, and hopefully anybody else sharing this will carry that link over. But uh, please... If you uh, do find something interesting in these numbers, I would certainly like to hear about it, and it would be best if you commented on either the Google Plus Pro Yaku community or on JapaneseBaseball.com under Blogs, Bayside West, Yokohama blog. And now it's time for the Pocket Calendar. Going into today, Sunday, June 16, only one interleague play game needs to be made up in this coming week. But considering that we've got rain in much of the country today, there may be another game or two to be played next week. While John Gibson may be off on vacation in Southern California this week, the show must go on. Gibson san got a chance to sit down and interview Docton's Casey McGee at Tokyo Dome before heading stateside on his trip, ensuring an interview for this week's Japan Baseball Weekly podcast coming out tomorrow, June 17th. Otherwise, John and Jim discuss Ballgate, which is the biggest uh, cover-up going on in Japan right now, and they also chatter a bit about Nami-chan's potential trade to Lotte. I look forward to the show. I'm sure you do, too. And with that, I submit to you this week's Pro Yaki Report. Thank you again for joining me. And until next week, take care. <laughs>